So for this one, we have the oxidation of alkynes using permanganate. So we'll need a reactant alkyne, and it will be internal versus terminal. So this would be a internal, and this would be a terminal alkyne. Next, we use this reagent, and we have neutral or basic and heated. So this, so basic and heated is all one condition, and neutral is the second condition. So why we learn each of these is because each one of these has a different reaction. So let's go through the first one. Neutral conditions, internal alkyne. So this is a internal alkyne. And what, what happens is, the first thing that happens is two OHs form at each of the ends of the triple bonds. So over here, we have two OHs. Here, we have two OHs. Now, since it's in water, since it's in water, what ends up happening is water gives a hydrogen here and a hydrogen here. When water is attached to a, um, to a group, uh, water is a good leaving group. So water will leave. So this water will leave and this water will leave, forming two carbocations right there and there. Then what will happen is double bond will form, right? Because it's more stable. Double bonds will form. Um, however, the hydrogens will still be here. And then what ends up happening is since it's still in water, the water will take away the hydrogens. It'll, de it'll deprotonate um, both of these. And therefore, you have this final compound. So just to recap, uh, a hydrogen will be added here and here um, because it's in solution of water. Uh, water is a good leaving group, so this leaves and this leaves. Carbocations form here and here. And then uh, double bonds form because it's more stable. Water depronates each of the hydrogens, and you're left with this compound. So now for this one, uh, neutral conditions and terminal alkyne. So it's the same thing, same conditions, except for this, in this case, we have a terminal alkyne. Now the difference is here we had a CH3 attached, right? We had a CH3 attached to the alkyne. Here we only have a hydrogen attached to this alkyne. So once again, on each side of the triple bond, we have two OHs. And then since it's in water, um, carbocations form because water leaves. And then a double bond will form. Right? Two double bonds will form. Now the difference between this and this is that you can see there's a hydrogen here. Right here it was a CH3, but here it's a hydrogen. And that's because of this hydrogen right here. Here it was a CH3, here there's a hydrogen um, attached. Uh, and the hydrogen's always implied, just as there's always two hydrogens uh, at each of these places, but it's just implied. Now, so since we created this uh, compound, right, so over here, there's a hydrogen attached, so the final compound will look like this. Um, and that's, that's the only difference between, uh, between here and here. Now, the thing is, um, once we have this compound, it, that's not the end of the reaction, right? Because what ends up happening is whenever you have a aldehyde, which is where you have O double bonded to a hydrogen and then the rest of the group, um, what ends up happening is that you have to make it a carboxylic acid. And all that means is just for if you have a, a hydrogen, you just add an O, oxygen, and then now you have a carboxylic acid right there. So to recap, the only difference between uh, this one and this one is because since this is a terminal alkyne, there's a hydrogen um, attached, therefore there'll be a hydrogen over here. Now if there is a hydrogen, we'll have to convert it to a carboxylic acid. So over here is the aldehyde, we created a carboxylic acid right here. And to make a carboxylic acid, all you had to do was just add a oxygen. So moving on to the next one, it's heated. Uh, basic conditions and internal alkyne, right? So the triangle just means heat, and that's that's how we represent heated. So for this one, this isn't the actual mechanism, but uh, the mechanism doesn't help in understanding it. This is much easier to understand, so that's why I'm just going to show you this. So the first thing is it actually follows the same mechanism as um, the first one, right? Because both of these are internal alkyne. So it follows this mechanism, and so you have this product. These are the same products. So for this one, how you imagine it is just have a line across this bond, right? And so when you, when you draw a line across it, you cut it in half, and then so when you cut it, this one, right, it'll become a, um, a OH, and over here, 
On this side, you keep the oxygen, you keep the CH3, and on that line, you put an OH. So all I did was just cut it in half across the um, part where it's connecting the two oxygens. Um, for that bond, just cut it in half. And so the, when you cut it in half, this line, um, you attach an OH to it. And the same thing for the other one. You keep the oxygen here, CH3 here, and just um, attach a OH. So for the final one, we have heated basic conditions and terminal alkyne. Once again, the um, product is actually the same as the terminal alkyne here, right? Terminal alkyne, terminal alkyne. The product was this, and the product was this. So for this one, just uh, draw a line across it, and then for that for that bond right there, that bond will now have a OH attached. So when you cut it across, that bond will have an OH, and over here. Um, same thing, uh, it will have a OH because you keep the oxygen here, keep the OH the same, but that bond that we're cutting, we attach an OH. So just attach an OH on either side of the bond that we're cutting. And now the one uh, note to point out is when you have this compound, right, an oxygen with two uh, alcohols attached to it, this actually converts into water and CO2. So you don't leave it as this, you leave it as, you convert it to H2O and CO, uh, CO2. Because when you actually have your overall mechanism, right, you have your alkyne, and then you have your mechanism in heated uh, basic conditions, you form your product, which was this product, right? It's this product. And then instead of saying this as your product, it'll actually be CO2 and water as your products, not this compound. So just to clarify, uh, when you when you cut when you cut across this bond, uh, that single bond becomes OH, and then over here, uh, that single bond that we have right there becomes OH. So just when you cut across, both sides will get an OH, um, which I show right here. So so I hope that helped, and thanks for watching.